Well, hi there. Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Look at these tomato plants. We have sown our seeds. We've grown them up. We've transplanted them in, in, into our garden. What do we do now? How do we maintain healthy plants to get a good harvest? I've got seven steps for us today. Let's go. Uh, well, we started these from seeds and I showed you how to start seeds. As they grew up, I showed you how to harden them off. We transferred them to a slightly larger container. And then we, we learned how to plant them out into the garden. Well, that's usually kind of where people get stuck because they just kind of let their tomato plant, you know, grow and it's on its own, you know. But there's a lot you can do to maintain these plants and to help you be successful with growing them. Let's get down to business with seven steps you need to do to maintain your tomato plants. The first one is weeding. Weeding is very important if you are uh, growing in a garden that doesn't have any mulch on it. Now I am using a uh, synthetic mulch this year because I'm trying to suppress the weeds that are in this garden. I do this maybe once every three or four years. I use a plastic uh, you know, nursery cloth instead of uh, a, a hardwood mulch. I like hardwood mulch. And I still have to weed. I can't say, you know, I can just forget weeding. Because down here, you're going to find weeds growing where they can find sunlight. And there's some nut sedge, and I don't like nut sedge. So, you know, you come along every now and then and just weed. Now, if you're just growing without mulch, you can use a hoe. You can cultivate with a stirrup hoe. Just come along and knock down your weeds and do it frequently. When weeds take over, you are asking for trouble because those plants are in competition with your plants and well we want to give our plants every advantage we can so make sure you stay on top of weeding our second maintenance task for our tomato garden is watering you always want to water your tomatoes or make sure that they're getting enough rain so tomato plants don't need to be wet all the time but you do want to make sure that they are getting consistently watered and that's the that's the key Inconsistent watering leads to problems like if you've got uh, too much watering uh, all at once or if you get a big thunderstorm that just dumps inches of rain on your garden. Your uh, tomatoes, can, they can split. They can take up water too quickly and the skin of the tomato plant or the tomato fruit itself can't keep up and you'll have the, the splitting. Now you can still use those. Uh, just be careful to look for bugs that have entered through those cracks. The other difficulty you can have with watering is if you don't water consistently, if you water a little bit here but then you forget two weeks and you water, you know, try to make up for it, you can get a condition called blossom end rot and that's where the bottom of your tomato turns brown and goes rotten and that's not caused by a calcium deficiency in your soil. It is calcium related though because calcium in your soil um, is taken up and it, there's a relationship between inconsistent watering. It's a, it's a watering issue, actually. So, you know, all the, all the methods of adding calcium to your soil are, are great and they help, uh, but they help long term. The, the cause, the root cause of blossom end rot is inconsistent watering. So, water your tomato plants if the soil becomes dry and if the plants look like they need water. Now, check your plants not at the height of the day when it's hot outside. Almost all plants, especially these uh, kind of soft-bodied, tender-bodied plants, they're going to kind of wilt a little bit in the heat and then they'll perk up when they're out of the, the heat of the day. They do that naturally. They protect themselves. They pump all their resources down into their roots and store their moisture there during the hottest parts of the day. So check your plants in the morning or in the evening. And if they look kind of wilty even then, you might check your soil. Stick your finger down in there and see if the soil is bone dry. If it is, water your plants. Now I've used an irrigation system before, a drip irrigation system. That is helpful. It's easy to turn on a faucet rather than have to go water every single plant in your garden. Um, but I don't have one installed right now and I'm just going to water my plants uh, with a watering can, just like that. Now I'm going to combine our second task with our third task. Our second task is watering, but our third task is to fertilize. And I'm going to do what's called fertigation. Um, I like to fertilize my tomato plants. You don't have to. Um, I have found over the many years that I've been growing tomatoes that those plants will perform much better if I 
uh, use a liquid fertilizer. Um, I like this Neptune's Harvest. It's specifically balanced for tomatoes and vegetables. It's a 242. You want that middle number to be a little bit higher. You can also use, I have used in the past, this Alaska Fish Fertilizer. It's a 511. You need all that nitrogen though is going to really promote uh, leafy growth and it's not necessarily going to promote fruiting and uh, well at, at mid stage in your tomato plant's life you need it to have a little bit of a higher middle number so that's the uh, phosphorus and 242 I like this stuff Neptune's harvest it ain't cheap but you know I, you buy it in this kind of gallon uh, jug and it goes a long way I like to just put a little bit of that in my watering pot a uh, tablespoon or two or just a good little dash and mix it up and I go fertilize with that. Now it is smelly, it's fish based and it's got a lot of minerals in it though that are really nice. You got some ocean minerals in there. Just good stuff all around. And I'll do this once every two weeks. When I water, I'll come out, I usually do it on my, when I, well, the days I make videos. I come out and I just water at the base, just a little bit. And these liquid fertilizers can be used by the plants sooner than a granulated um, slow release fertilizer. Now we did put some slow slow release fertilizer in the hole when we planted that. If you remember we put this uh, if you remember we put this IV Organics uh, 333 balanced slow release fertilizer. We put about a handful of that, you know half a handful in each hole. So there's long-term fertilizer down there. By the way, if you want to support our channel, go over to IVorganics.com and use my code GUMBO10 right there on the screen. Gumbo 10 and you'll get 10% of off, off of anything you buy from IV Organics over there. And that's a, that's a good company, Charles. I really like what he's doing. Anyway, back to tomatoes. On top of that slow release, I give that liquid fertilizer every two weeks. And what we're doing is we're feeding the soil. Um, the plant doesn't directly take up that fertilizer. Um, the, the, the exchange between the soil and the roots of the plant happen at the at the molecular level and it's the bacteria that make the nutrition available to your plants and you're re actually feeding the bacteria when you're using fertilizers. So fertilizing your plants promotes healthy growth. Um, your plant should be, a tomato plant should be a, a, a deep medium to dark green and if they're any other color than that they're stressed out. So um, weeding, watering, fertilizing, we're going to combine fertilizing and watering today. Now this Neptune's Harvest calls for an eighth of a cup per gallon. This is a two and a half gallon. I just put about a quarter of a cup in there and I just measure it out by sight. And you do this every one to two weeks they recommend. I usually just do two weeks. And uh, there we go. Let's go fertigate. Quit licking that. Gross dog. This weed barrier cloth is permeable to water, but I do like to kind of get the soil soaked through the little X mark that I've cut there. You just go along and give a drink to your plant. I mean, watering's not rocket science, is it? It's especially important that you fertilize your container tomatoes because they're dependent on you for all the nutrition and if you've got a dog they're gonna like the smell of this stuff it's not really super bad for them but if you don't want them getting into it put them away put the dogs inside while you fertilize our next garden task is trimming and training now we've already pruned uh, done a first prune on these bushes but look they're getting out of control already um, you want to just make sure that you are keeping your plant to as many main growing vines that you desire. This one has four going on right here, and I really don't need four for the size of this plant. It's starting to reach out and they're starting to touch each other. Um, I'll show you how to do that in another video, but now we're just maintaining. So I'm coming in here and I'm looking for things that need to be maintained. I don't need all this up here. I'll just cut that off. I want to cut downward facing leaves that possibly touch, are going to touch the ground. We don't want soil from that cut down there splashing up on our tomatoes. That's a vector for disease. I see some suckers coming up that are going to be main vines that I don't need. So I'll just trim those out. And I'll trim for height. If this thing gets tall enough, um, well, I'll just cut it where I don't want it to go. 
So pinch, you can pinch these suckers out. You can just thin your plant out so there's good air circulation. It's not too dense, it's not a jungle. I'm just gonna trim this guy. So a little haircut, that's all. These are getting bushy down here. Bad airflow, reaching for the ground. Too dense in here, can't see anything. So I'm gonna come inside this plant and just kind of thin out some of these things that I don't need. Well, I can't even see what's going on down in here to, to trim. There is a bunch of stuff right in there that we don't need. Where does it start? There it is. So that's a task that you have to keep on top of, especially with these indeterminates that just grow and grow and they get out of control. They grow like crazy. Just come in and thin them out. And if you're trying to keep it down to a couple of main growing vines, like I am, two or three, then you'll want to start pinching out the suckers where they, uh, where they start coming on. Here's a good example of one. Let me get you closer and I'll show you what a sucker is. This right here is a sucker. You can see there's a main vine growing up with a leafing branch coming out at a, at a fairly flat angle well, in that crotch between those two. That's what this is. This, is, this will turn into a whole nother vine. We don't need it, so we snip it out. Suckers do not rob energy or zap energy from a plant. Uh, that's a myth, but uh, they will turn into a whole nother growing vine, a whole nother. Uh, you take a sucker out, you can root them in water, they become a whole nother plant. So if you don't want these things to get out of control, give them a little trim. While you're trimming and training your plants, uh, that's a good time to also take care of task number five, which is to inspect them. And what we're inspecting them for is pests and disease. And you want to look for anything abnormal, but especially with tomato, everything on earth likes to munch on your tomato plant, especially caterpillars. And if you get caterpillars in here, you'll find them by looking for the holes they leave behind. Uh, this plant looks fine. It's got some spots on some leaves, but that's not concerning me just yet. Look carefully for evidence of chewing, chewing animals, because that's the threat to your plants usually at this stage of the game. You're usually not going to find disease when they're uh, young in their prime plants, but you will find pests. And you find them um, where you find evidence of their chewing. If you find a tomato hornworm in here, get rid of it right away because they will decimate your plant in no time. Army worms will do the same thing. Aha, uh -huh. I've got some holes over here. Let's take a look at what's causing that. As we investigate our plant, we're looking for signs like that leaf down there with holes in it because where there's holes, there's going to be trouble. And uh, there's our trouble. You see that? That caterpillar? He's been munching on my tomato plant and enjoying himself. Now there may be others, so check carefully. Usually there's one or two or three around, but sometimes you'll find a whole army of them and those are actually called army worms. So we're going to eliminate this fella. You can get rid of caterpillars pretty easily. If you've got army worm uh, infestation and you, you don't have time to go through and just like hand pluck all those worms or millions of them, Get you some BT. It's a bacterial organic uh, insecticide that kills chewers, especially soft-bodied chewers like caterpillars. Spray that on your plants, that BT follow the directions, and the next bite the caterpillar takes will be among his last. It, they kill them off pretty good. So BT, that's what you want to have on hand if you get a lot of caterpillars. Otherwise, uh, if it's tomato hornworms, they're hard to find because they match the, the color of the plant get you a UV flashlight and come out at night and shine it on your plant and if you've got a hornworm, a hornworm in there he'll light up you'll be able to see him and those you can just pick by hand. When you're inspecting for caterpillars one sure sign that you have a caterpillar or more is if you find their poop it's called frass and it's little green balls that are dropped onto the leaves from above and that's a sure sign that you have caterpillars. So if you see that, make sure that you investigate very carefully and take appropriate steps. 
Our sixth and seventh tasks we do in the garden have to do with, well, they kind of go together. Once you've inspected, if you do find that you've got a problem, you need to treat that problem. You need to deal with it. And I just mentioned BT is good for caterpillars, but what if your problem is you've got birds raiding right your garden and you see when you're inspecting your garden, you find your fruits half eaten. Um, you gotta do something to protect your garden. So that's not a treatment, that's a protection. So the treatments go with the protections. There are ways that we defend our tomato plants from invaders and pests and creatures that wanna take the work from you. So when you're inspecting, if you see something that needs to be protected, like bird damage, squirrel damage, you can take steps to do that. I have used in the past bird netting and bird netting can be a very good thing. Bird netting has a downside and that is that it can be a hazard to other kinds of wildlife. Uh, snakes can get caught in bird netting and suffocate. And well, of course, snakes are beneficial to your garden because they eat some of the pests. Uh, you know, uh, they dine on slugs and various things that you don't want in your garden. Uh, if you find that you've got bird problems and you do use bird netting, make sure you cinch it down very well to the ground. Um, I've come out in my garden and found birds within my bird netting, so it's not always fail proof. But that's what we have to do. We have to uh, inspect and then treat the problems and protect our plants from whatever hazards are in our area. All right, so just to recap, we are going to weed our garden, we're going to water, fertilize, and we're going to trim and train our plants. We're going to inspect them. And I would, I would encourage you to inspect your plants daily. Go out there every day and take a look at them because problems come up and destroy your garden without even, I mean, they can come overnight and you don't catch it in a day or two and you've lost a whole plant. So inspect daily and then treat for what you find and protect for the threats that you find. And that's how we maintain these teenage gardens, these tomato plants that are just now starting to fruit for us. And we, we see that fruit. I see fruits over there. I want those fruits. I really love tomatoes. They're my favorite thing to grow. I, I gotta stay on top of these plants. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I hope you enjoyed our content. I hope we've earned your subscription. And if you like what we do, please check our links down in the description. You can support us through those links. And well, happy gardening to you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.